have seen earlier the finest uh, division of instruments in terms of transducers, transformer, uh, power amplifier, modulator, demodulators, differentiator, uh, integrators and so on. That is the finest division of any in instrument with which the whole instrument is built up. So to say we have seen as a building block for a, a big building, big buildings raised by stacking uh, bricks. In terms of bricks, a building is realized. Similarly, an instrument here is realized by arranging different such uh, uh, basic function elements like transducers, transformers and so on, a whole instrumentation is obtained. Now, to, uh, now we are going to see how an instrument is uh, roughly divided into uh, three groups. That is uh, the whole instrument is divided into three rough groups. What you have seen earlier is very fine division, but this is a rough division. The signal input unit signal conditioners and uh, signal output unit. That is the whole elements within the instrument is divided into these three groups. Now what are they? First, the signal input unit comes into contact with the measured parameter, for example, a thermocouple. The what we are measuring is temperature and the thermocouple junction is dipped into the bath whose temperature we are interested. So the signal input unit comes into contact with the uh, measured parameter. Uh, mostly you will find the signal input unit uses whatever you have learnt under physics or chemistry, a physical happening or chemical reaction. These are the basis for uh, tapping up signals. For example, uh, one good example is the humidity of air makes our hair uh, longer. So that is a physical effect. The humidity affects, uh, affects the hair to uh, become longer, such a physical effect or chemical effect and uh, these are what is made use of in signal input unit. So mostly you will find signal input unit is uh, mostly a uh, transducer. It may be one transducer, sometimes there are uh, two transducers in a signal input unit. Uh, for example, in pressure measurement, we have a diaphragm. We have a diaphragm, the pressure acts over the diaphragm. That is our first uh, transducer in pressure, uh, transducer in pressure uh, instruments. So what it does, the diaphragm on, um, uh, on receiving a pressure on one side, it deforms, deforms. Because of deformation, the diaphragm is subjected to strain at different locations, strains. So what you achieved by this diaphragm is, signal pressure is pressure is transduced into a strain epsilon this is a diaphragm yeah this is a diaphragm by using diaphragm we have transduced the pressure into a uh, into a strain signal the transducer because one physical parameter into another physical parameter and now this epsilon the strain is made use of in by using a strain gauge strain gauge, normally it is faced at uh, near the end of the diaphragm circumference and uh, also at the middle strain gauges, these are the strain gauges. Strain gauges. So by using the strain gauges, the epsilon, the strain available at the diaphragm is converted into a yeah, um, uh, resistance change, say delta R. That is, resist, the strain gauge is made up of resistances of uh, say 120 ohm, strain gauge gauges of 120 ohm. So the 120 ohm will become so 120.1 or 120.2 ohm. That is, epsilon is converted into, uh, into a resistance change. That means the in signal input unit for a pressure, transit, pressure uh, gauge consists of two 
transducers diaphragm plus strain gauge. So this is our signal input unit. This is now what we are doing is we are dividing the whole instrument in three rough groups. First is signal input unit comes into contact with the measured parameter. Now the signal conditioner takes up the say, uh, signal of the output signal of the signal input unit. So I can also uh, draw the signal flow diagram by using this. So here it is one input signal and then it goes to the signal condition. The signal input unit gives the output signal and that will be input signal for the signal conditioner. What its signal conditioner achieves? What does it achieve? It changes the, uh, it conditions the, so to say, it conditions the signal so that it can be accepted in the signal output unit. Now signal out output unit, there are different types which you are going to see. Depending upon that type, the signal input you signal conditioner should condition the uh, signal which is coming out of the signal input unit and prepare it for the signal output unit. For example, a, a bridge network, yeah, a bridge network is a typical example. What it does, it takes the signal, uh, takes the signal in terms of position change and convert it into a voltage change E. Yeah, that is what it does. So signal conditioner also can contain can uh, can contain transducers, transformers, power amplifiers, and so on. Now uh, the signal output of the bridge network normally is very small unit. So what is done is power amplifier, a power amplifier is the commonly the next unit for such instrumentation. This also belongs to signal condition because what it does is it, uh, magni it magnifies the output signal of the bridge network, bring it to a level where it can be a further process. Probably if the signal output unit is a, um, is a digital unit, then we have to go for the uh, AD conversion, AD converter. All these things are signal conditioners, yeah, all these things are. Now this is your signal input unit. In unit and this may be signal conditioners. Signal conditioner, yeah, that is. Now from this, it goes to the signal output unit. Now how many types are there in signal output unit? See, signal output, um, uh, it depends on the parameter. Suppose in a chemical industry, uh, the measured parameter is a very risky one. For example, in a pressure in a in a uh, pressure vessel, it should it is supposed to maintain at particular uh, level. Suppose it increases beyond such, such certain level, the there may be different level of dangers involved. Uh, it may explode or it may give rise leakage of some poisonous gas. So depending upon situations, we can uh, design the output uh, unit. For example. The, the, if there is no danger at all, if there is no danger at all, what we, su what we normally do is display the parameter in a uh, scale. Uh, that is our monitoring instrument. So that is our scale. The pointer moves over the scale, 0 to so P maximum, for example. So it may be uh, 100 bar, something like that. In that case, say there is no danger even if the pressure increases beyond P max, there is no danger at all. So uh, it can go here also, no danger. In such cases, we say scale and uh, pointer, scale and pointer. That is the uh, display, that is a display, so pointer, display unit yeah, with display with scale and pointer is sufficient in case the param measure parameter is, uh, is not giving rise to any risk. Suppose uh, that is the output will go to, uh, yeah, um, an instrument yeah, converter, uh, here it is AD convert, so it is more, more or less display unit. So it is same, same thing, same thing, display unit. This is the case when the measured parameter uh, does not give rise to any danger or anything like that, no risk is involved. Suppose uh, the, uh, it is going to explode, some local, uh, uh, some local uh, damage may happen. In such cases, what we can go for, instead of display with a scale and pointer, we can have a flickering light, yeah, flickering light, flickering light. 
see the uh, display unit the uh, normally the operator in the control room uh, will note down the reading in the pressure gauge and and uh, be, he will be satisfied okay pressure is uh, as per uh, requirement um, suppose the pressure increases if the and if the operator fails to note it uh, how to draw his attention because if it increases beyond that value it is going to explode so you have to draw the attention for that purpose we can give the signal of the output you need output signal of the signal conditioner to a flickering light a red la a red lamp so naturally the at attention of the operator will be drawn towards the flickering light and you will immediately know something is going wrong so that is second way of um, uh, this uh, output can be a flickering light suppose it is a poisonous gas it is going to explode and also poisonous gas is going to spread over the whole vicinity now it's not only the uh, the damage is inside the factory but uh, the nearby villages or nearby residents also may be affected in such cases all people should be uh, should be uh, warned in such cases siren yeah siren yeah so the when the measured parameter increases beyond that level immediately a siren blows out and the all people in the vicinity in the inside the factory also outside the factory they are all informed something uh, some catastrophe is going to take place be prepared and all so immediately also uh, correction uh, work can be started so we find now uh, there are three ways the output signal can be seen that it can be displayed either display unit as an instrument where a pointer moves over a scale and the, uh, the operator is supposed to note it or suppose if he is in conversation and all the uh, measure parameter is risky then a flickering light will come and uh, attract the attention so that the immediately the corrective action is done or in case a very dangerous uh, explosion a siren is uh, blown even when the operator sleeps he will be woken up and the residents also are informed and something is going to happen do something so these are the three ways apart from these three ways the output signal can also be analyzed in an oscilloscope so output signal ad convert it, it uh, um, or the from power amplifier it can be taken to uh, a yeah, uh, oscillograph or uh, uh, oscilloscope where the variations can be noted or if it is a dynamic variations probably we may not be able to note it has to be recorded in an oscillos oscillograph where it is recorded later on it is analyzed and uh, nowadays we have got floppy which is nothing but magnetic uh, tape magnetic tape where the message is uh, stored or it can or sometimes the message can go to a printer uh, printer in terms of page printer or in in terms of a recorder strip sort recorders so these are the various uh, type of uh, various type of Uh, signal output unit so signal display unit or a siren here yeah, it can be given to a flickering light yeah flickering light or it can be a siren or it can be um, uh, storage in a floppy or it can be uh, analysis for analysis for oscilloscope or uh, stroke oscillograph so these are the output units the signal output unit so this way the whole instrument can be divided within the instrument into three rough groups rough group that means now the signal from signal conditioner it goes to the signal output unit this so this is the rough classification of the uh, instrument Yeah. now having seen the finest division having seen the rough division within the instrument now we go for the whole field of instrument how the whole field of instrument is divided yeah. now the whole field of uh, instruments is divided like this first based on the elements yeah first based on the elements type of elements within the instruments the instrumentation the whole field of instrument is divided into mechanical instrument electrical instrument electronic instrument optical instrument and uh, um, uh, hydraulic and pneumatic type of instruments as it is shown here mechanical electrical electronic optical hydraulics that means the elements in those instruments made up of for example mechanical instrument only mechanical elements typical examples i have got uh, three uh, three units this is a pressure gauge yeah it's a pressure gauge uh, containing only mechanical elements so we find a tube bent tube in c form and a linkage and gear segment and the uh, gear it's a bigger gear and smaller pinion is there inside 
and the pinion axis is connected to the pointer. This is the pointer. So we find it's only purely mechanical elements. It's a pressure gauge made up of purely mechanical elements. And uh, more example is we have got a dial gauge. This is a kind of dial gauge normally students are using in the workshop. Um, students using in the workshop. So where uh, any displacement here is shown by the moving pointer. So it is a dial gauge where you find the elements are a shank or plunger and you find inside this back cover is open and uh, you find inside some uh, axis and gears and levers. It is a purely mechanical elements. And the another example is a screw gauge. You find a functional screw gauge is made up of a bolt and a functional nut here. So the uh, it is a screw, screw thread principle. So when the screw rotates one full, one full rotation, it uh, forwards or uh, reverses by a distance of one pitch. So it is a screw thread principle. So it is a purely mechanical elements. So these are some of the examples for the mechanical instruments, where the elements is uh, elements are made up of mechanical uh, linkages, uh, gears, and so on. And in electrical uh, instruments, we have got uh, say coil. For example, voltmeter or a um, uh, voltmeter or a um, uh, ammeter or a power meter or gauss, uh, electrical field, I mean magnetic field measure, measuring instruments. So they are the electrical uh, parameters where voltage, current and so on are measured by such instruments. And the electronic, we have got calculators, computing and uh, teleprinters, electronic devices. Um, uh, power amplifiers, a few, many of the power amplifiers now it is electronic. Of course, we have one or two pneumatic and uh, hydraulic power amplifiers, but mainly we have got power amplifiers made up of electronic elements and analog to digital conversions, all these things are electronic in nature. And optical instruments, surveying instruments, and coordinating machines, uh, the diaphragm, uh, I mean, diameter measuring, um, uh, universal measuring microscope. So all these things are uh, optical instruments. And the hydraulic pneumatic, very famous uh, uh, instruments are uh, load cells of high capacity load cells, uh, compact and um, uh, high range can be obtained in hydraulic and pneumatic uh, devices. So based on the elements, there hydraulic, hydraulic oil, pneumatic pressure here. So based upon the elements used in the instruments, the whole field of instruments is classified under these headings, mechanical electrical and so on up to hydraulic and pneumatic. And second way of classification is uh, depending upon display. Now this is depending upon display. So here again you insert instruments. The second way, a new way of uh, dividing the instrument, the whole field of instrument is analog instrument. Uh, typical example watch, for example a watch, we say it is uh, even though the second hand moves uh, every second, but uh, the hour and the minute hand we do not see the step motion. So the hour and minute hand we say it is moving uh, in analog fashion. Yeah. So that is unlocked. Unlock instruments. The pointer moves uh, uh, continuously without any steps. That is unlock display. Whereas digital display, the pointer moves. Pointer moves uh, in steps. Say the second hand, it moves uh, in uh, in uh, steps. And also display here is numbers. Yeah. The digital uh, display is in terms of numbers. In analog display, we have got only the hour and minute hand motion. So what is the advantage or disadvantage of these two types? In analog instruments, even though there is a uh, wall clock there, even without reading the numbers, I can have a rough, a rough idea of the uh, time, so around 10.30, time is around 10.30. It is already it is 29, 31, 32, it does not matter. As far as I see the approximate time, many instances it is more than sufficient. You do not know the time up to second, approximate time. So what is the time like? So to say people say, what is the time like? So it is around 10.30, that is sufficient. Such uh, information can be obtained only in analog, analog uh, type of display. Whereas if you are interested precisely the uh, time at that particular instant, then it is better always we have 10 hours, 20 minutes, 55 seconds. So that is precise uh, reading can be obtained only in a digital display. But what is the drawback of digital display? You have to read all the six numbers. So it should be readable distance. It should do enough any illumination. Pro, 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 it is because you know, some liquid uh, crystal display of some of the time period, time, I mean watches, if the, if the atmospheric light is not sufficient, you cannot read it because uh, the, we do not have enough light. To read the, to read the digital display, we require light, 
certain distance, all these are requirement. And you have to concentrate more or less, more, more, more than that, you have to concentrate and take a reading. You cannot get a reading in di digital display by just by a glance, that is possible only in analog display. Digital display requires your full attention and uh, full environmental situations where you have to make reading. So, the di that is a disadvantage. Disadvantage of digital display is you have to read all the numbers, whereas in analog, you, you, even a just a glance is more than sufficient to tell the time lag. So, what is achieved in hybrid is both the advantages, analog as well as digital display, both of them are uh, combined together in the hybrid type of displays. So, that means the same wall clock, you will have you somewhere near the middle, just below, you will have a window where you have the readings of uh, the time also, 10 hours, 20 minutes, 55 seconds. This return, you, there also it is there. So, if you want to have the time lag, just see the hours hand and minute hand, or if you want to read exactly, then read that window, what is whatever the number is there. So, that is both the display are available in the scale, in the, uh, in the, uh, in the scale or, or in the display. Both of them are available. Analog display is there and digital, they both combined together in the case of hybrid. So, based on this uh, display, instruments are divided as uh, a digital instrument, voltmeter is a digital instrument or analog instrument or hybrid instrument, that way it is classified. Then another way of classifying uh, the um, uh, instrument, whole field of instrument is either it is a null type of instrument or deflection type of instrument is based upon the deflection, whether deflection is there or not, yeah. whether there is pointer deflection, pointer deflection is there or not. Um, typical example is uh, the in grocery shop, whatever we have the weighing machines, uh, not weighing machine, we have got simple balance, simple balance. That means in one of the pan, we put our standard weight and we put our commodity in the other pan until the pointer comes to zero position. At zero position, standard weight and the commodity weight both are equal. That is, measurement is made by bringing the pointer to zero. That is, that is there should not be any deflection of the pointer. So, that is called null type of uh, instruments. Whereas, in deflection type, um, uh, uh, that is a yes, um, uh, balance, uh, simple balance. This is a simple balance. Simple balance. Here, uh, it may be a spring, spring balance. Whereas in spring balance, we have got yeah, uh, basically a spring, and it will have a hook, and in the hook, you uh, you uh, put your commodity. So the free, the uh, one end of the uh, spring, the other end of the spring, the bottom end of the spring is connected to a pointer, the pointer moves over a scale. But the thing is, we do not see all this inside, we this all covered, that is all. See, when the pointer moves over the scale, now how much it has deflected, that is seen here in terms of, this is 0 kilogram, this may be 20 kilogram, 20 kilogram force. So, it may be say about 10 kilogram. That is where the pointer stops, that gives the reading of the instrument, that is deflection type. Where the, where the deflection stops, that gives the reading. Whereas, here the measurement is made by bringing the pointer to 0. What is the advantage and disadvantage of these things? Say null type, we say we are going to learn later a loading effect. Loading effect is a loading effect is a nearly zero in terms of null in null type of instruments and deflection type. We have some loading effect, which which you will see later. That is uh, depending upon pointed deflection. Instruments are called null type of instruments and deflection type of instruments. And the last the instruments again can be classified into open loop instruments and closed loop instruments. This is principle, principle of functioning based upon the principle of functioning, principle of functioning, based on the principle of functioning, open loop instrument and closed loop instrument. A typical example is here, what you have seen earlier, the pressure gauge, pressure gauge. Yeah, it is a pressure gauge, uh, kilo pound, it is kilogram force per centimeter. So, so, so it is a 1 bar, 2 bar, 3 bar, 4 bar, 5 bar, 6 bar, that is range is 6 bar. It is an instrument, pressure gauge, typical instrument. And if you open the back side, you see all these elements. Now, what is this is based on principle of functioning. What is the principle of functioning? When you give the pressure here, it is uh, connected to this hollow tube. It is made up of spring material, spring steel or uh, a phosphor bronze material. And this is a closed end, it is sealed here. So, it is something like a tube, a cycle tube, if it is exact without any air. When you put air, it assumes a perfect round. Similarly, when pressure air comes here, this end, you know, 
we try to uh, move if it is closed one it will assume a perfect round and if it is a free end this free end will be trying to extend so when pressure is there it is trying to extend so this motion is picked up by the linkage and then it is given to an again pivot mechanism and this pivot at the end of the pivot we have got the uh, gear so i will draw it on the board it is simple this here open open um, open loop of uh, instrument so it is what we have got is uh, c type tube here we have connect your pressure here and pressure is uh, acting over the uh, hollow tube so this try to move this direction and it is taken by a linkage and here we have got our we have got our gear and with this gear your pinion is made to engage and the pointer is attached to the uh, pinion so this is our scale yeah now what do how it how it uh, i mean what is signal so, so to say signal flow diagram the signal flow diagram helps us to understand how the instrument is functioning for example now uh, the tube transduces the pressure into tube transduces the pressure into a deflection d <laughs> Yeah, deformation or deflection D, and this D uh, displacement is taken up by the linkages. So linkages converted into an angular rotation theta. So here you have got theta. D is converted into angular rotation theta. This theta is magnified by the gear and pinion mechanism, and uh, a uh, rotation theta say theta 1 you will say theta 1 and this is uh, theta 2 theta 2 this is gear gear unit converts theta 1 into theta 2 and this theta 2 is converted into displacement d2 you will call this d1 say d1 this is d2 that is the motion of the pointer over the scale distance Even the distance is distributed over uh, uh, circular scale. The actual or uh, length linear distance we call it d2. That is by using the pointer length. This is pointer length. By using pointer length, the we get the output signal. So to say, the output signal xo, and this is our input signal xi. So now to understand the instrument, how it functions, we draw this so-called signal flow diagram. and uh, from pressure to displacement displacement to angular rotation angular to another angular rotation and then another displacement so it is a, we call it it's a, a instrument working in open loop condition because the signal flows from one end to the other end it's a open loop it just gets uh, go straight and it's open loop in contrast to that we have got another instrument also used for uh, pressure measurement but it works in closed loop condition for example it is uh, say electronic pressure gauge Called electronic pressure gauge. It functions in uh, closed loop condition. The construction is as follows: uh, We have got again a diaphragm, and uh, we have got a uh, contact with a with a coil over it, and it is positioned. in between poles of a permanent magnet this at uh, the contact point deforms uh, takes the so this is a diaphragm where the pressure acts when the pressure acts the diaphragm deforms this deformation is picked up by this extension rod which forms part of a coil and uh, this is say north pole and this is south pole this is your, our permanent magnet and uh, this uh, this rod extension rod there is one more extension a velcro lever like that and this motion is picked up by a displacement transducer displacement transducer picks up the 
motion of this uh, extension rod which follows the deformation of the pressure uh, diaphragm and uh, this gives rise to signal that is displacement is converted into a uh, voltage and it goes to a power amplifier this is a power amplifier power amplifier so it amplifies the voltage developed by the displacement trans this is displacement transducer transducer and uh, the current flow from the power amplifier is given to this coil is given to the coil through a constant resistor this is a constant resistor or the current i is flowing through uh, the, the when it flows through the constant resistor or a voltage output eo is obtained so this is the construction of a electronic pressure gauge how does it function to uh, understand that we have to draw again signal flow diagram so first uh, uh, first one is pressure is transduced into deformation so pressure is transduced into deformation so that is what it uh, what it happens here it deforms like this so that is a, say distance d d1 for example d1 so diaphragm transduces the pressure into a displacement and uh, this displacement yeah before before that before that sorry the diaphragm transduces first uh, before uh, deformation what it does it uh, the pressure the diaphragm area this diaphragm area by using the area it gets converted into say force yeah force pressure into area will give you force now you have got another force here but that you will will come little later so here it is say it is plus and minus and another force is coming it's called fb you come to that little later but uh, because of this force the um, uh, diaphragm deforms or or two forces yeah, one force coming from the pressure another force from the force coil this is the force coil force coil coming from the current flow from the coil current flow through the coil within the magnet so these two forces is compared again by the comparator uh, by the diaphragm which is functioning as uh, comparator this is comparator so it compares the two forces a force from the force coil and force from the pressure net force fe is taken up by the diaphragm again again diaphragm and gives rise to displacement d1 that's how d1 comes d1 comes not straight from the pressure pressure gets converted into a force and for from force uh, two forces there are compared and then finally the resulting force is uh, causing deformation in the diaphragm and this deformation is picked up by the transducer displacement transducer displacement transducer converted into a yeah, voltage e yeah, converted voltage e somewhere here and this when multiplied by uh, our, our power amplifier when it goes to the power amplifier power amplifier energy input is there and uh, then we have got a current flow i current flow i as the output from the power amplifier and this current flow is taken to the force coil and this force coil gives rise to fb but when the current flows through a resistor r gives rise to eo that is our output unit output signal so this is the signal flow diagram for this electronic pressure gauge now what is the difference between signal flow diagram of that electronic pressure gauge and bore down pressure gauge now here the signal flow diagram is straight whereas here we find there is a loop there is a loop in the uh, signal flow diagram hence we call it 
is an instrument based upon the closed loop condition and uh, press, uh, boron pressure gauge is an instrument based upon open loop uh, instrument so this is the uh, this is this way also the whole field of instrument is divided instruments working in closed loop instruments working in open loop condition what is the advantage and disadvantage of these two setup now an instrument working in open loop condition normally very cheap yeah? but uh, the accuracy is not high whereas in um, um, uh, instruments working in closed loop condition we have got very good accuracy of the order of 10 order of 10 accuracy is so if it is 1% accuracy open loop your know, corresponding instrument can work in 0.1% uh, accuracy and uh, naturally it contains more elements to an instrument work in open loop closed loop condition uh, more elements so it is costly uh, instruments working in closed loop condition are generally costly but of high accuracy and instruments working in open loop condition they are cheap and have less accuracy so that is how the whole field of instruments is divided so this brings to an end uh, the chapter on introduction of measurements next chapter is basic concepts basic concepts before i start this basic concepts i would like to give some of the important um, uh, reference books some of you interested to see the uh, reference books uh, to enhance their knowledge so i'll just write down the reference books so now it's better um, um, uh, we see some of the important reference books in this subject so that those who are uh, interested can read further uh, uh, further about this topic the first and foremost uh, book and we also call in our institute as uh, bible of measurement is by uh, doebling uh, that is um, e o doebling the topic is uh, measurement systems measurement systems application and design uh, there are various uh, editions um, uh, our latest is uh, 19 uh, that is McGraw Hill 1990 latest edition is 1990 McGraw Hill 1990 latest edition and the second uh, important book is Beckwith and Buck 1 2 Beckwith and Buck. So, topic is mechanical measurements. Mechanical measurements, additions and publisher, additions. Addition Wesley. 1965 and third uh, is by Holman JP Holman okay. JP Holman uh, experimental methods for engineers methods for engineers uh, Megro Hill is also Megro Hill book Megro Hill 1966 and uh, by Indian others uh, first two chapters uh, in my book uh, on precision engineering elements will be very useful first two, two chapters the elements of precision engineering Elements of precision engineering, Oxford and IBH. And IBH, uh, 1984. 1984. And the other book uh, in measurements, 
which I published recently in 82, that is principle of principles of mechanical measurements, principles of mechanical measurements, same publisher Oxford and I B H 1992 okay. and uh, other Indian others, so 6, Trangan, Trangan, Sarma, Mani and Mani, Mani. the topic is uh, instrumentation. instrumentation or uh, devices and systems, devices and systems, Tata McGraw-Hill, McGraw-Hill that is in 1983. So, these are the some of the important books and one more book is uh, by Swani. A. K. Swani, K. S. A. W. Sorry, S. A. H. Swani. Swani, that is. Uh, a course in mechanical measurements and instrumentation. A course in mechanical measurements, a course in mechanical measurements and the instrumentation. Instrumentation that is in 1989. Yeah, these are the important books and uh, Shani especially has worked out uh, number of problems in each chapters and Holman also works out uh, uh, numerical problems and Loeblin as I told as uh, he has dealt to the topic in very deep, very much in detail, very much in detail. And he gives a number of problems to be worked out also. Doyablin gives a number of problems to be worked out, but uh, work, uh, to be worked out by the students. Whereas the examples are worked out already in my book also, in some of the chapters, principle of mechanical measurements, some of the important chapters I worked out problems. And apart from that, uh, Rangan and Swani and uh, Holman, uh, these are the books where we can see the worked out examples. Yeah. So this is uh, to enable the students who want to read some more material on measurements. Now we go to the basic concepts. How important basic concepts are? So we have to understand the basic concepts to understand any subjects. Uh, then only we can appreciate the contents of a subjects. So in measurements, there are certain technical terms which are very essential to be appreciated by the uh, students. Understanding of the concept is very uh, uh, important so that the whole field of instruments is properly understood. And first and foremost uh, definition or concept is signal. Even though we have used the word signal very often, you will see in detail how um, um, we will see we will see how uh, wh what the term stands for, the signal terms stands for. The definition of signal is as follows: signal is one. Signal is one which carries information, which carries information. This is the definition. You can call it a signal only when it carries some information. And a typical example is, typical example is um, uh, the uh, traffic, traffic signal, say traffic signal. We call it signal there because it tells us some information. So there is red, 
red means what it means it carries information of stop stop your vehicle what is the parameter there it is only color red is color it is not a signal color but when that color carries the information for the road users that you are supposed to stop then it becomes signal so we call it red signal why we call it red signal since the red color carries information of stop your vehicle so the here parameter is color but color has become signal when it carries the information or tells information for all the road users stop your signal similarly green green is also a color but it becomes signal when uh, when it conveys the message that start or proceed here it is actually proceed proceed you can um, uh, uh, you go go ahead or when it is uh, amber amber uh, amber yellow or something like that we say start that is here they are only the color but they can when they carry the information we call it uh, signal so signal is one which carries always information this is the basic definition in an instrument a typical instrument um, where i say uh, a voltmeter so here you have got a coil what is voltmeter Volt, voltmeter made up of permanent magnet north pole south pole and uh, we have got this coil assembly pivoted between two bearings and we have got a spring attached to the coil this is your center line and the, to the coil we supply your voltage to be measured this is your terminal so when you supply voltage what happens that is we it's a voltage is supply and we call this as uh, here also we call it signal because its voltage is given so since we are going to call everything as signal here also it's called input signal now the voltage is given the coil resistance r yeah 1 by r v by r gives rise to current now the current becomes current signal it is because the current carries the information of the voltage if since it carries the information of voltage how much voltage higher the voltage higher will be the current so it's a proportion quantity so current carries the information of voltage hence it is called current signal since the current para the physical parameter carries the information of voltage how, regarding magnitude it becomes a signal so it is become current signal so voltage from voltage signal you have got a current signal and this signal is further converted into a torque by use of the coil plus magnet coil plus magnet converts that into current so current to torque now torque is proportional to higher the high torque high torque will be there for higher current higher current will be there higher voltage so finally we find torque carries information of voltage so this information of voltage is carried down by this parameter so it becomes your torque signal torque signal so torque signal is there in the assembly and when it is given to the spring spring then you got this rotation theta so theta is the signal rotatory signal carrying the information of the torque proportional torque we have got the uh, we have got the voltage just one minute i'll just close it and uh, having the pointer we got the output voltage d2 or d this is your output signal so you find so this output signal displacement carries information of the um, uh, information of the voltage that is output signal we connect a pointer here the pointer moves over the scale this is your d so we find finally you got the output so we find that these parameters current torque theta d are carrying the information of the voltage they are all called signal current signal and so on so with this we will close today